heart failure, it's a progressive disease, it's, it's not curative, and so we can do our best on trying to educate and utilize the medications that are available to us. I think everyone you know, knows or knows someone that has um, some extent of heart failure. When you evaluate somebody in the hospital, you're looking at their oxygen status, you're looking at their fluid status, and that is, uh, for example, x-rays or echocardiograms. Heart failure is an interesting area to really even target because it's a frustrating thing. It's not very sexy. Once you have that diagnosis of heart failure, really it's inevitable that there will be exacerbations. There, there will be uh, declines. And we historically have been left with waiting for the late symptoms to find when we need to, to address or change our, our plan of attack. So this device, like CardioMEMS, is a way to prevent getting readmitted or even admitted in the first place. It's not nearly as large as a pacemaker. Its target is in the lungs and it's in the pulmonary artery, going through the femoral vein in the groin or in the internal jugular in the neck. And you place a tube and that gets us to a certain point. From there we can place a catheter and a wire and it loops around, will be placed in the lungs and we advance the device over that wire. We deploy and we leave the CardioMEMS device uh, in the pulmonary artery. And now you have a uh, deployed uh, small CardioMEMS device which will stay there permanently, will not move, and it is immediately able to send signals to our transponder. Then when they go home, that device is going to send us a signal and we can compare their pressure level to what we had when we were in the lab. And that data will come daily and we will follow those trends weekly and make changes on the regimen uh, you know, on a regular basis. We want to improve their quality of life, and this way they don't have to come into the hospital, into the emergency room to get an evaluation, but rather they're at home, you know, comfortable, and we can make changes remotely. They're sent home with what looks like a, a pillow, um, and they put that pillow ideally uh, on a bed, and they lay on the bed in that spot for about 10 to 20 seconds. They have a little um, handheld wand that they hold over their chest at the same time that it's doing the reading and taking the pressure from the device that's in place in their pulmonary artery, and then that transmits a reading remotely to our monitoring system. If we're able to identify three to four weeks earlier before they're able, even noticing the symptoms, then we can do it in a more gentle um, and controlled approach. So we are going to be able to identify patients who are at that low risk and we can keep on managing in the community and earlier identify patients who need the advanced therapies. Well, it's special to me because I went through it once. I was taken with atrial fibrillation, which is something that a large percentage of especially men are afflicted with. That gave me a pretty good idea of what goes on in the Center for Heart Health. There were other locations in the Mass General family that were inserting the MEMS sensor. They knew that it improved patient quality of life. What we want to do is to create a team type approach to philanthropy. One person can't do it all. Once we get through the first year, that the program will more or less fund itself. This hospital has had a reputation of extremely high patient care. When a patient comes here, they're treated as a person. Part of a person's well-being is also how they face things mentally. And this hospital helps them do that.